Hey, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government and Dying to the website, of course, markstevens.net. Got another one of these great, great success stories that we're going to talk about here. Uh, congratulations to Rulon in Texas. Rulon took a principled stand against the predators there in, in a local city, uh, Tarrant County. I can't pronounce the city, though. I'll, I'll get that up there, though. Um, a little background so you understand the circumstantial evidence why I'm saying it's not the only possibility, it's not the only plausible explanation, but the circumstantial evidence does strongly suggest that because Rulon filed a motion to dismiss, the matter was, was, was eventually dismissed. Uh, by the prosecution, actually, they filed their own motion to dismiss. So basically what happened, he got a traffic ticket. And he challenged it by way of the motion to dismiss, which, yes, is based on a lack of evidence proving jurisdiction that the prosecution, uh, uh, the police officer and the, and the prosecutor have not met their burden of proof. They can't set forth a valid uh, offense because while they're accusing him of violating the law, they don't have a shred of evidence that the law applies in the first place, which when you're accused of violating a sacred rule, you have to, an essential element of that is that the rules apply and to be able to yeah, you have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. And here at the beginning, at least by a prima facie, you have to have something. You have to have some, some evidence to support the charge. And if you're missing half and you know half of the essential elements, eh, not so good. So we filed a motion to dismiss, and yes, I know that the motion or the discovery request is premature. I get that. But I don't need an, a, uh, you don't need what, uh, what do you call that, an element to surprise with these people. If, if, the accu if the accuser has no evidence and is actually saying, well, I'm, I'm special because I'm, I'm not like you. I'm not a plebe. I am God's servant here on the earth. And when I make claims, I don't need evidence. See, there are those, especially critics here of the No Stay Project, that believe that if you call yourself a government, not only do the rules of of do no harm and, and, and treat others the way you want, you know, like and to, the basic principles of, of morality don't apply to them, but basic principles of logic and proof don't apply to them. They could just say our rules apply because of Zeus or Odin, and uh, they magically do. So anyway, we, the, the discovery request was in. Uh, uh, we wanted to have the evidence proving their claim that just because Rulon was physically in Texas at the Constitution and rules applied, and that uh, we also need the name of the witness for personal first-hand knowledge of that. Remember, Rule 602, which is the federal rule which has been adopted by most of the states, and even if it wasn't, it's still going to have the same rule. To be a witness, there has to be evidence of proof introduced that the person has personal first-hand knowledge of the matters that they're testifying to. So if a police officer is accusing you of violating the code, there has to be proof he has personal first-hand knowledge of that. If he doesn't have personal first-hand knowledge of what laws apply to you, he's not technically allowed to testify against you because he's not a witness. He's, he's purely speculating. So uh, what we have is he filed a motion to dismiss based on lack of evidence proving uh, that the code applies in the Constitution, that so there's no jurisdiction, they didn't set forth a valid claim. I can claim that you violated my rules. If they, there's no evidence the rules apply, then good luck. Uh, so what happened was the prosecutor filed, we'll get that up, uh, the prosecutor filed a motion to dismiss. See, and this is, this is very telling. So look, this is circumstantial evidence. Instead of providing the evidence and the name of a police officer or another witness with personal first-hand knowledge, instead of providing the proof, all the prosecutor did was file a motion to dismiss based on their discretion. There's no... There's nothing specific. It's extremely vague, but that's what you expect from lawyers. Lawyers do not like to be very specific. So the more vague they are, the less you can hold them responsible for what they're saying. So this, again, is very, very telling. Why, if the motion had no merit whatsoever, zero, as the critics have said, there's absolutely, it's not even proper English, it's legalistic gibberish. If that were true, why file a motion to dismiss your own complaint? Uh, and for those who may turn around and say, it's a flurry of motions. It's too much trouble. I say that's ridiculous. That is not true. It's pure speculation, especially given the circumstantial evidence that one single two-page motion was filed, or three pages most. One single motion that they think is gibberish. One. And a Brady request, which is only two pages long also. 
which they have to do in every prosecution anyway. They have to provide the Brady material. So even in places where there is no pretrial discovery, they have to give you the Brady material. So it doesn't hold any water that it's just too much trouble, that we're porcupines or something. No. One motion, one discovery request. And if it is lacking in merit, and that the judges are just going to deny it anyway, why would the prosecutor who lives by prosecutions, who wants another, pro another conviction, why not just let the judge hammer, the guy, hammer rule on the trial? Well, the judge is going to deny this garbage. It's just not, it, he's a run-of-the-mill anarchist. This is garbage. They're going to deny it's an easy slam dunk prosecution. Uh, and we'll get a conviction in 15 minutes. Not about a move, bada a bing. What prosecutor who, who puts, who their, their, their entire career is dictated by their convictions is going to walk away from a slam dunk conviction and file their own motion to dismiss? Ah, f no, no, I, I'm not buying it. It's possible that those explanations are true. Just not very probable. And the circumstantial evidence is very strong that the reason why the judge, and we'll get it up, the reason why the judge granted the prosecution's motion to dismiss is because there wasn't any evidence. They filed a motion to dismiss to avoid the motion to dismiss that Rulon filed, to avoid the lack of evidence, to avoid the fact that they couldn't meet their burden of proof. And maybe if it's too much trouble, it's because you're calling them out on their scam and it's too much trouble to make it look good. It's not too much trouble to file uh, a Brady request response. You know, you know, file the, the Brady material. Give me a break. It's a traffic. It's not a murder trial with a hundred defendants or or hundred witnesses. Please. So that, that, those those are, look. The motion was granted. You can see that the judge granted it. I'm not going to try to read the name. It looks like Bass. And then you can see the seal for the court there. Uh, circumstantial evidence is pretty damn strong that it was because of the motion. And we know for a fact that they can't meet their burden of proof because there is no evidence the Constitution and Code apply to you just because you're physically in Texas. Because it's just a written instrument. And they're just men and women forcing us to pay them. So uh, that defeats that. So again, if, the, if all they had to do to prove, though, that the Constitution and Code applied, if the only evidence that they had to provide was to cite the Code, which is not evidence, but that's, if that's all they had to do, just cite the Code, why not do that? They didn't. They filed their own motion to dismiss. That speaks volumes. So uh, the circumstantial evidence is pretty strong. So congratulations to Rulon for standing, making a principled stand against these predators, filing a motion to dismiss, holding the accuser, accuser to their burden of proof, and, and, and sticking it out until they withdrew, and you got uh, the, uh, well, you, you got the, uh, the dismissal. Um, and also thanks for sending me the documentary proof. So you see, the bottom line here is that he took a principled stand. The predators didn't get any more of his time except for the stop and having to file the motions. So they didn't get an opportunity to steal from him. Effective damage control, ticket thrown out, and that's what's really important here. Exposing these people for the, for the criminals that they are. That, and, and I said, if, if you disagree with what I presented here, if you think it's full of crap, that there's no evidence at all, that the circumstantial evidence does not favor that it was the motion rule on file that he got from me, Present your evidence. Present your proof. Uh, not speculation, because that's what they've done in other cases. Not an assumption, based on the evidence. He got a ticket, filed a motion to dismiss, filed a Brady request. Prosecution, instead of responding, filed their own motion to dismiss. So, And then the judge granted it. So if you think you've got evidence to the contrary, and you think you have proof that the prosecution didn't have here in all these other cases that just because rule on is physically in Texas that the Constitution applies to him, please call the No Stay Project. We're live most Saturdays from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time, uh, or you can contact me at markstevens.net. But uh, till then, I, you know, I, hey, I'm waiting. Uh, no one has been able to present this so far, even a federal magistrate and a Supreme Court Chief Justice. But if you think you've got what they don't have, please uh, contact us at uh, markstevens.net and call them to a live broadcast. Again, my name is Mark Stevens. The website is markstevens.net.